Hi, a lot of ARM-based systems which are running GNU Linux are using the device tree, but what is a device tree and how we can use it? So this is the topic for today's video. Today I will give you a very short introduction um, about the device tree, but if you want to get more details, there is a quite good talk available on YouTube or on other streaming platforms. Um, which is called Device Tree for Dummies. And if you want to get a deep dive into the topic, I would recommend you to um, check out this presentation. But today I should only give you a brief introduction to the device tree. Okay, so now let's start. And we have to ask ourselves the question, how does an embedded processor know which hardware is available to it? Well, there are several options how you can achieve this. One option would be to hard code everything into the Linux kernel. But of course, this is not very flexible, because if you want to add a device, in the worst case, you have to recompile the whole Linux kernel, and this is not very practical. So a better and more dynamical solution is by using the device tree. So the device tree is just a list of devices which are available for the processor. And here it doesn't matter if the hardware is embedded into the chip with the processor or if the hardware is connected to the chip, for example, like DRAMs or SPI flashes or I2C devices, this really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's take a look at an example for a device tree. So here is our first example and it's not a complete device tree, I just copied a small section of it to give you an idea how the device tree looks like. And this example is from the AM33XX chip from Texas Instruments, which is um, used, for example, in the BeagleBomb Black. So it's a quite common SOC, which is used for a lot of embedded Linux applications. So, and here you can see the device tree contains various nodes, so GPIO 0 or GPIO 1 is a node, and various device properties. So everything in here is a device property. And each node here represents a device which is available for our processor. So up here GPIO 0 seems to be a GPIO and interrupt controller. Um, here this compatible information gives us here in the string the vendor um, name, which is Texas Instruments before the comma, and ohm for GPIO is the device name after the comma. And we have some more device properties here. For example, down here, this device seems to have 69 interrupts, or it uses interrupt number 69. I'm not 100% sure about this, but never mind. And up here, this rec or register here gives us the physical address of the GPIO IP. So in the memory map of the processor, it can reach the GPIO IP over this physical address. And the next value here is the size of the GPIO IP. So 1000 hexadecimal, mm, maybe this is for kilobytes, but I'm not 100% sure, never mind. Okay, and here we have it for a second GPIO controller again. And down here we have an SPI controller here. So this is SPI zero, the node. And this compatible string is also important because over this string, the Linux kernel knows which device driver it needs for accessing this device here. So the Linux kernel will search for a driver which is compatible to TI OMEP4 MCSPI for example here. And the drivers will also contain a, a list of compatible devices. So inside the driver, um, there is a list to which devices this driver can be used or for which devices this driver can be used. Okay, and for example, down here we have another property. So the number of chip selects for this controller is two, for example. Okay, but what are you doing if you want to add a device? So one option would be to open up your um, device tree overlay and add your device. 
but I forgot to mention one important thing. Of course, this is uh, this device tree here is in text form, but for the Linux kernel you prefer a binary form. So you have to compile this device tree into a binary form and then you can pass it um, with the Linux kernel and the Linux kernel knows which devices are available. And so if you change something inside the device tree, you have to recompile the whole thing. And if you just want to add one small device, this is not very practical. So an option is to use device tree overlays. So an overlay is just a small piece of this device tree which you want to add and you say to which part of the device tree you want to mount it and then you describe the hardware you are adding. Then you are compiling this device tree overlay and you can add this device overlay in runtime. So you can add a new device in runtime and this is really, really flexible. Okay, so let's take a look at such an overlay. So here is the syntax again. So down here we have the version of the device tree overlay. Here we have a compatible string, so with which devices this overlay is compatible with. In this case it's our TI chip again. And here fragment zero is now our new device we want to add. So the target here is SPI zero. So this device is connected to um, the SPI zero SPI controller. And down here we get the device name of the new device, which is Ethernet one. And the device we want to add is um, a ENC 28J16 SPI to GPI, uh, to Ethernet, so GPI, Ether, no, SPI Ethernet controller. So the ENC 280J16 is a SPI Ethernet controller. So if you want to add uh, an Ethernet interface, for example, to a Raspberry Pi Zero, you can use this chip, connect it to the SPI, and then you have an Ethernet port. And down here we have some properties. For example, this device is connected to um, the interrupt 25 and the interrupt um, should be generated on the, the falling edge. And down here we have another property. So the max SPI frequency here is uh, 12,000 megahertz, for example, here. And that's how you use device tree overlays. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. The reason why I did this video is to give you a brief overview because in later videos I want to use device tree overlays for my Linux driver tutorial and so this should give you a brief introduction. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.